Okay, so this is a Brother Sewing Machine XR3340 that's exhibiting a problem. E6 error. Can you clear that? Only by turning it off. Only by turning it off, okay. My goodness. Now, does the um, mechanism feel stiff? Yes. You can't turn it. Cannot turn. Okay, great. It's been cleaned. There's no lint. And so we're going to disassemble it and take a look at, at the inside. Okay, so we've re removed all the screws, we loosened and removed all the screws. We taped the screws to the approximate location where they came from because they're a few different sizes and we just want to keep them in order. This is just an easy way to do it. And now we can split the case. Yeah. And now we're going to split the case. Okay, so we've split the case, and um, there's this bundle of wires that loops around behind this clip. I don't want to disconnect any wires if I can avoid it, because I think that just leads to trouble. All I'm going to do is just give myself a little bit of room by loosening these here, and I'm going to lay the machine flat so I can work on it a little easier. Just keep the other half of it, wires connected, I'm not disconnecting the wires if I can avoid it. Just laying on top here. And then we have the machine disassembled. So looking at the components here, there's a, there are two shafts, there are two primaries, there are two shafts. There's a shaft on top here and a shaft on bottom here. So you've got a motor over here that drives this pulley to this main, to this main gear here, which drives this top shaft and an interconnecting um, belt that connects to the bottom. These two are synchronized. This is synchronized with this. They're in a certain look, they're in a certain position. You've got to maintain that timing and that synchronization. This controls the needle up and down. This controls the bottom, the bobbin position. Um, one of these shafts is stuck. It's either the top or the bottom. Take a picture of where the bobbin case sits. <clears throat> we already know that the um, this area. We already know and we already suspect that. Um, it's the bottom section that's stuck, and we're going to diagnose that now. So um, what I'm doing is I'm turning the, uh, the motor manually. And we can see that that top gear there is moving a little bit. Right? It's moving. Um, I'm losing focus there. Yeah, it's moving a little bit. This back one, this back gear, is not moving at all. This is frozen. This is stuck. This gear here. So, it doesn't go anywhere this way. It's all here. Now, we had seen this before, so we knew that was going to happen. We're going to put a mark on the belt and on the gear. Put it right on the gear, too. Yeah. So, we have that lined up. We also have to do the same thing on top, though. So on the shaft, put a mark on the shaft. Where? Here? Right on the shaft so you can see it. So you can line it up with something. Mm-hmm. And line it up and why don't you put a yeah, why don't you put a mark on there too? Right there, yeah. So we're all lined up. Mm-hmm. Right. Great. Because we're going to take the tension off this belt and we have to put it back exactly where it came from. Or well, the timing will be off the uh, needle position and the bobbin. To loosen the tension on the belt, we're going to um, remove this tensioner.
I'm going to take the, the uh, pressure off using the tensioner. <coughs> okay, so we've gotten the tensioner out of the way. There's three screws that held that box in place. I really should disconnect this wire. It'll just make it easier. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've unplugged this wire. It only goes in one wire. It's keyed. It goes in this way. It's keyed. And I took off this ground. Now that I'm, I'm this completely out of the way. That, that harness is completely out of the way now. And uh, you have to be very careful of this. I have not upset anything with the with the gear or the toothing or moved anything. The timing between this shaft here and this shaft here has to be has to say where it is. So I'm going to be very careful here. I'm going to keep the make ensure that the belt stays on this. I'm not going to turn this. I'm not going to turn a shaft. And make sure it stays exactly where everything is. But this end, I'm going to slip the belt off and. Um, when I put it back together, I'm going to align these two marks. Okay, so what I've done is I slipped the tie wrap on the belt because I really don't want it to slip off that shaft on the on the on the on the top, and I'm not going to turn this mechanism at all. But I am not going to slip this belt off of here. Just did. When I put this back together, that this mark is going to line up with this mark. This is stuck. This is the problem. I cannot budget. So let's take a look. What's going on? We see some particulate matter here in the bottom, but I don't think that has to do with anything. It might. Who knows? There's some right around the shaft here. We don't see anything obvious yet. I think immediately what I'm going to do is remove this block to see if the uh, this this fairing is uh, is jammed because I don't like this little particulate matter right here. Okay, so I've removed the two screws that held this clamp in place to free the uh, bearing block, and I can see immediately that uh, that bearing block is the problem. That bearing block should be free on the shaft, and it's not. It's turning with the shaft as I jiggle it just a little bit. You see that? In fact, the shaft is now free now that I've removed the bearing block, so that's the problem. This bearing is uh, utterly destroyed. Uh, let's see if we can uh, diagnose. Let's see if we can make some kind of repair to it. It's going. It looks very challenging. So I removed two more screws. This screw here. This screw here. I have already removed the cap from the, from the bearing block, and this whole mechanism just slides out now. And I have it sitting on a table here. And I can see that the shaft, oh, put, put some pressure on that please. Shaft turns easily and the problem is this bearing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take off this gear. I'm going to try to slide this uh, bearing off and see if I can see well, what's I'm going on. So um, see that mark, carry that mark all the way over, all the way over to the end of the shaft here. So we everything is aligned. Yep. Right on that gear is fine. Yep. Straight over. Then on the end here, on the edge here, right? And then just a little dab on the shaft. Not all the way across. Just a little dab on the shaft. Not all the way across though. You have to Right. Oops. <laughs> right. Just mark it there. Good. So I'm going to, there are two set screws here. There's one here. There's one on the bottom. I'm going to remove the set screws, and I'm going to try to put the, pull this bushing off. So I've removed the uh, gear, and I can see that the shaft is all chewed up. It looks like the gear, although there are two set screws in it, was actually spinning on the shaft to an extent, and that's why it chewed up the shaft. What's holding the shaft though is this bearing. This bearing is not, that is just not budging. I'm going to remove this C clip and try to, um, and try to tap it. Actually, I'm going to have to tap that off. So first, I'm going to remove this C clip. Okay, so we brought the mechanism to another bench. And what I'm going to do is put a, uh, a uh, adjustable wrench on it like this. And I'm going to tap on a wrench and hope to drive that bearing block off the shaft. <clears throat> wow. 
It doesn't look like it moved. Okay, so I've driven the uh, block off the shaft and I hope it's free, free enough now to uh, slide off. So I think what we have here is um, there's uh, grease on this shaft. I believe that's grease. We're going to try cleaning it in a moment. I think that's grease that has been impregnated with uh, cloth fibers. Now it's turned into this really very solid mass here and uh, jammed up the bearing. And I believe that's what happened. And we're going to try to clean it with some alcohol. Okay, good. So, <coughs> we're going to use alcohol. And we're trying to, going to try to clean this off. And it's a mess. In fact, it's a surprising mess. I never would have expected it. These are grooves. So we cleaned up the shaft as best we could, and we cleaned up the bearing as best we could, the bearing block. And you can see that it slides on now. See that it slides on now. And now it's free turning. That's the way it should have always been. It sounds raw. We're going to put some oil on it, some machine oil on it, and maybe that'll help. And that's about the best we can do. Beyond replacing the shaft entirely and the bear bearing block entirely, I'm not doing that. Not yet, anyway. I'm going to just try to do a repair here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put some oil on this and put it back together. Okay, we just used sewing machine oil. I don't know if it's the right oil to use. It seems to me it needs to be something thicker or heavier, but it's what we had, it's what we're using. And now it's quite free. Now it's... I do have a little bit of... So we're going to put this uh, gear back on. Unfortunately, we lost the keying mark on the end. However, there are two set screws in this, and they're offset. And I can see a mark in the shaft here. And there's a mark in the shaft on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this over it and align as best I can. Yeah, we didn't turn the shaft. The two set screws marks. And hopefully that repositions it. Okay, so we've got that worked out pretty well, I think. We've got the gear back in place. We've got the C-clamp back in place. The uh, bearing block is all in place. I'm going to slip this back into the housing, and there we go. I've right, got these two screws I'm going to put back. I'm going to put the bearing block back, block back on, and this shaft is now turning freely, as you can see. Okay, so I've got the assembly screwed back in. This screw here, this screw here, and these two screws here. And I can just give it a little test, and now it's turning freely, but of course I don't want to move that much. I have to get that belt back on. I've got to line it exactly where that mark is. And there's our clever little mark. And I've got to slip that over carefully, as carefully as I can be. Slip it back over this and align the marks. And that should be it. Now it should still be timed. It should all still be timed. But only testing will be able to tell. Okay, so I've got the wires uh, reconnected plug back in, all the screws are in, and uh, what I'm going to do though is uh, adjust this tension. Now, one reason why this could happen is if there's too much tension on that belt. This is the tensioner adjust. I'm going to loosen it, and I'm going to attempt to adjust it. Okay. So now, so this should all work, and it all works freely now. And here's the mechanism, now free. You can see how the two, the top shift and the bottom shift are synchronized. That's why that timing mark is so critical. That's why the timing is so critical.
Okay, so before reassembling this, we're going to try, um, we're going to check the timing. You can see that the, um, the uh, hook on the, um, that picks up the thread, that hook that picks up the thread is coming too late. And that should be above the hole in the needle. And it's arriving too late. It's kind of just a little bit below the thread. It's not going to catch the thread the way it has to. I've got to get that I've got to get that earlier to the uh, to the needle. So I'm going to do that by trying to tweak the uh, the uh, pulley position on the shaft. Okay, so I've made an adjustment. Uh, it was pretty easy to do, actually, much easier than I thought. What I did was I uh, there's two set screws here. I loosened this one completely; it's still loose, and then I used this one to adjust it. I loosened both of them. So then the needle moved independently of the bobbin mechanism. So then I just adjusted it until I had it aligned just the way I needed it to be aligned. And you can see that the uh, pickup, that pickup hook now is above the uh, hole in the needle. And that's the way it needs to be. Okay, so it's all readjusted and we're going to reassemble. Okay, so we're reassembling this. We're going to test it before we put all the screws back in. Seems to be good. Tension seems to be good. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. And there we have it. Happy sewing again.